Okay, today we're going to start Ayin Hei Yom Beis. It's not really in the middle of the page. It's a little above the middle of the page. Slema Ketanoi. Thank Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day. We should have the base of English. Also, in the memory of um, Shalom, what's her name? Zahava. Zahava Golda. Come again. Zahava Golda. Bas Baruch Binyamin. That's the um, the Druin's uh, mother and Shalom's grandmother. Okay. I made a bracha, right? The Gemara starts off like this, but b- before we um, before we um, get into this Gemara limit tonight, let me just tell you one introduction. <coughs> There's a machlekes moide beknas. If someone admits to a penalty, moide um, beknas is pater. But this machlekes moide beknas vachach ba'oedim. He admits to the penalty, and witnesses show up afterwards. Does he still retain that exemption? That he had when he admitted it's Machlegus Rav and Shmuel. Okay. Rav Hamnuna and Rav Yechanan came along and said that even according to Rav, that Maida Beknas Vachakach Boedim remains Pater, that's only if it was a real Maida Beknas, not if it was a fake Maida Beknas. A real Maida Beknas says, is like this that if the person admits to stealing, when he admits to stealing, he has to pay a Karen. And he just exempted himself from kefal, but there was one payment that he had to do, which is the principal payment, because he admitted to stealing. He has to do a principal. But let's say he admits to the slaughtering of it, then there's no payment that he has to make. He already had to pay for stealing. That's the type of admitting that he exempted himself from everything. So that's going to be a fake. That's that's a fake made of knas. Maybe he's only admitting. There's no there's no ramification from his admitting. That's going to be mechayev in it, and he thinks. Maybe it's just admitting just to get out of it. There's only a benefit. He's just admitting to get out. So in such a case, may the v'knas v'achach bo edim is going to be chayev. He's going to have to pay, because that's not a real admitting. You say, even according to Rav, that says, may the v'knas v'achach bo edim is potter. That's only if he admitted to something that would make him obligated to pay something. But over here, he's not going to even be, be obligated to pay anything. So if witnesses come later, we say that he's actually higher. The, the, well, it would, in this case, it would be, yeah, it would be the four or five times, right? Okay. <coughs> so, Mar says like this, let's say that that discussion, if you still have to pay after witnesses show up, in a case where... You weren't mechay of yourself with anything with the hayda, with the admitting. That's really a machlekes tanaim. Let's see, it's machlekes tanakam and sumchus. Goes like this: Hayushnayim meidim shaganav. Let's say two witnesses testify that who, what was our ganav's name? Shmerel. That uh, that that uh, Shmerel stole. Two witnesses testify. What did he steal? He steal uh, an ox or a lamb. Hayushnayim meidim esir shetavach umacha. And now it's another two witnesses that say. That he not only that well they're not discussing the stealing they say that he that they saw that he slaughtered it or sold it. Who's Moed de Geneva? Turns out that the first two witnesses, Reuven and Shimon, that testified that Shmerel had stolen, were actually Adam Zayim. They weren't even there. Either Shabbatla Mitzvah or Batla Kula. Once the first witnesses fell off, so then the fact that he that that Shmerel had slaughtered or sold the lamb is already nullified <coughs> because. But what lamb did he did he sell or, or slaughter? He never stole. Are the second Adam also Hazama? No, not yet, not yet. Even though the second Adam weren't um, weren't uh, Adam Zimmerman, but because the first ones with you know it's stacked on top. Why is slaughtering and selling a problem? Because you stole it. But if you never stole it, it's not a problem. No, just they share. Or maybe they that he slaughtered, but maybe that lamb must have been his. You know. Uh, or maybe eighty shekel. Whatever the case is, he doesn't have to pay the um, the double. The uh, he doesn't have to pay the double. He doesn't have to pay the the three or four, four or five times. Who's What is it? He doesn't have to. Let's say it's the opposite. Let's say second group of Adam um, got the second group of Adam that said that he slaughtered it or sold it. They became Adam Zayim. 
Okay, so now, who is Shalim Tafsumi Kefo? The first group of Adim, Ruven, and Shimon, they're still good. So he has to pay, Shmerel has to pay double payment. The Hain, but the second group of Adim, whatever we said, let's say the name is Levi and Yehuda, that second group of Adim, they have to pay Tashlumi Shleisha. They have to pay three times because they wanted Shmerel to have to pay an extra three times. And now we caught that they, what they did was lying. They were really with us. So they have to pay what they wanted to do. The first group. First group of Adam said that he stole. He didn't. And he did. Yes, so he has to pay Kefal. The second group of Adam said that he slaughtered it and they were false. They were Zaymen. So they have to do the payment. Now you have to bear with me when the, in this Gemara, because it really doesn't have any logic until the Gemara um, will readjust what the what Sumchus is talking about. To the Ghana. Because they tried to get him to pay it. Yeah, the Ghana ends up making a little money here. <coughs> Uh, interesting. Sumcha says that they, referring to witnesses, they have to pay the double. And he has to pay the three times or the uh, or the extra two times. Okay, now, we don't know what Sumcha is talking about, but the Gemara is going to elaborate and we'll figure it out. Uh, hey, which case is Sumcha talking about? Remember, there were two cases. Case number one was that the first set of witnesses, Reuven and Shimon, that testified to the theft, they became Zaymen. Case number two, the Sefer, was that Levi and Yehuda that testified to the uh, to the sale, they became Zaymen. Now, Simcha says that they have to pay double payment. Sounds like it would be talking about the first case. Because they, they, the witnesses, Zaymen would have to pay double payment. The problem is, what about him paying Tashlume? The, the, the extra bit, there's a slight problem with that. If he didn't steal it, how does he uh, have that pain? I hate Kai. Sumchus. What is Sumchus referring to? Ile Maresha. If we're talking about the first case, Gemara says, Leslie, the Sumchus, Eidish, Shabbat, the Mikdash, Shabbat, the Kola. If the whole case, if the whole discussion, if the whole um, fact that he had stolen has fallen off because we just uh, we just said that um, that they were Adam Zaymim and he never stole, so then how do you have him paying? Uh, uh, the extra times. Ella Seifa. Must be that some is talking about the Seifa. Now, if that's the case, uh, the Seifa was talking about we are, we know that he stole and we don't know that he saw, that he slaughtered it. Shabri Kama Rabbana, the Rabbanan had a good claim against Sumchus. Who Mishalm Tashlomi Kefal? He's the one that has to pay the Kefal. Shmerl, he stole. The Hei Mishalm Tashlomi Shlesha and they have to be the ones to pay the extra, <coughs> the third, the extra three times because he didn't sell it and they, they were trying to get him to, or, or, or slaughter it. This just the Ghana should pay uh, twice. The Ghana should pay twice, and that's it. Kefal. And uh, and uh, they should pay what they wanted him to do was to pay the extra two or three times. It must be that we're missing some case in this discussion, and we're going to throw in some another scenario into this discussion and say that the Rabbanan and Simchas are really arguing about something else that wasn't mentioned. It goes like this. Going for example, the Asu two people show up, Bamra Amrilai, Ruben and Shimon show up and they tell Tashmeral, Ganafta, you stole. Amrilahu, he says, In Ganafta, you're right, I stole. Tavachti Macharti, not only did I steal, but I even slaughtered it and uh, and um and sold it. Miyu, however, Lebifnechem Ganafti, you were not there. It wasn't in front of you. I know who was there, and it wasn't you. Vaisi Sadi Vazminu. The Leiba Payogan of witnesses show up and actually say <coughs> that uh, Reuven and Shimon were actually not there. Okay, now we have Edom Zaymen. Now, the only thing is, well, let's see, well, but he admitted himself. Well, we don't listen to him. Well, we yeah. won't listen to him for a theft, but when he, I'm going to say we shouldn't listen to him for his, um, you're asking, we shouldn't listen to him because the, the double payment is a penalty. Now, the only thing is that his admitting was not a full admitting because of his own, he wasn't coming on it, he wasn't coming clean and coming on his own. He was saying that, yes, I stole because witnesses told him that you stole. 
And then that's why he admitted to it. So it's different than a regular admitting. It's quite different. It says, <laughs> However, the original owner shows up with witnesses that says that Shmerl actually did steal. And he had, and he also uh, slaughtered and sold it. And now we knew that he slaughtered and sold it because he admitted to that. First witnesses did not say that. The second witnesses did say that. But before the second witnesses were there, he had already admitted to it. That's a regular case of Now, one second. That's a case of but it's about something that he was not really high of anything for by that admitting. When he admitted to Tavach Machar, when he was admitting to that, there's no ramifications that he has to pay anything because of that admitting. So when witnesses show up later, according to Rav Amnuna, he should be exempt. I'm not exempt, the opposite. When witnesses show up later, according to Rav Amnuna, he should be chayev. Only by Geneva, if witnesses show up later because he, he obligated himself to pay the principal. So let's take a look. Now it says, Wait, so if he was then he's exempt. But because if he slaughtered or sold... Witnesses come later, then he's chayev. That was Rav Hamnuna and Rav Yefanan's, uh, how they differentiated between that. So we're discussing about admitting to Tzvicha. The Rabban and Savri, the Rabban and Rav Gav, the Haidah, the Gneva Machmas, Edom, who the Kamaida, even though the Haidah, the admitting of to the... Am I saying too much, Shiva? No, okay. no, I just forgot to be something. Okay, wrong. the Rabban and told that since admitting to the theft was not a real admitting, all right? Because why did he admit? Because witnesses accused him of stealing. So he admitted. But But the Rabbanan hold, okay, you, um, we know that you, you're chayev for the kefal because Adam accused you and you admitted, even though those Adam turned out to be false, but it doesn't matter. He didn't admit on his own, so he has to pay kefal. But when he then goes ahead and he says, not only did I steal, but I even slaughtered it, that's a real admitting. And even though witnesses show up later, but so what? He admitted to the slaughtering, and so he's exempt. And those the Rabbanan are rejecting Rav Hamnuna's um, uh, differentiation. He says that the Sumchas holds that the admitting to the slaughtering of the animal is not considered admitting because it's only following well, it sounds like it's only because it's following. But I think the real point is, is that it's, he's, there's no ramifications of that admitting. Um, it's just admitting to, to go free. So even though witnesses come later, so he still should be chayev. Those first witnesses that became Zaymim and they have to pay the double. And he has to pay the extra two or three times because witnesses showed up later after he admitted and we're trusting those witnesses. Because admitting to the Tricha Mechir is not a real admitting, according to Rav Hamnuna, according to Sumchus. I'm Rav Achabred Ravika. They see all of this was Leima Ketanai. <coughs> Let us say that the din of Rav Hamnuna is really a machlekes uh, between Sumchus and the Rabbana, which turns out that Sumchus would agree with Rav Hamnuna. Now, I'm um, Rav Achabred Ravika. Rav Achabred Ravika says, like, it's not really a machlekes um, between Sumchus and the Rabbanan. It's something else. What this is talking about is something else. Uh, uh, it's, when the Gemara says Lema Ketanai, we usually learn it that it's a question. Why should uh, Amirayim be arguing about something that Tanayim have already argued about? Right? So we try to get rid of it. Always, if it's a Lema Ketanai, we try to say no. It's really not. We say like the Kuli Al the Tzvichal He everyone really holds of Rav Hamnuna. Everyone really holds that uh, his admitting is not considered real, a real admitting, and therefore, if, if witnesses come later, he's going to have to pay. The Gemara is borrowing a term over here. There's a term called Eidashiyat Yachal Azima. If you're not able to turn this, this yeah. testimony into Adam Zayman, the reason why that would happen is usually because you don't have a, a date on it and you don't have a time on it. If, you're missing, if the witnesses are missing a date and time, then you can't say, how could you say that on that day you were with us? So if you, it, witnesses that cannot become Zaymimim, we say is not real witnesses. 
You have to, it has to be able to become Zayim. Okay, now over here, we're not really doing that. Over here, we're doing something else. Over here, we're borrowing that term. And we're saying that the second set of witnesses cannot become Zaymimin because the, the guy that actually stole Shmerel said that I didn't steal in front of you witnesses. I actually stole in front of those witnesses. And he says the name, Levi and Yehuda. Now, that's, an now, that's right. That's it, a type of admission. But the fact is those witnesses showed up. Now, those witnesses, you can't say that they're Zaymimin because the guy himself admitted to doing it in front of them. So this is a Shiat Yachal So let's take a look. Okay, that's what they're arguing. The Rabbanan and Sumchas. Sumchas is a student of Reb Meir. Going to the Saudi witnesses come, Vamrele, and they say, Ganafti, you stole. Vamrele, who? He says, Ganafti, you're right, I stole. Utavachti, and I slaughtered it, or Macharti, or I sold it, or and sold it. Miyu, however, it wasn't in front of you because you weren't there. Ella Bifne, Plaini, Plaini. I actually stole in front of Levi and Yehuda, not in front of you, Reuben and Shimon. Vaisi Sadi Vaz Minup, and actually witnesses show up and say that Reuven and Shimon, you were never even there, you were with us somewhere else. The Leiba Payuganov, that was, that they weren't there when at the theft. Vaisi and Levi and Yehuda show up. The other two witnesses, Vaisi the Beit Ganov at the Tavach and they testify that he stole and that he slaughtered it or sold it. Hey, it, yeah. I'm sorry, is this a case where? The Adim Zoma means <coughs> to say something that's true. Usually you think about Adim Zoma means saying something not true. Right. But here it seems what they're saying is true. Right. Is that right? Right. And they still have to pay. Yeah. Because they couldn't give a place. Because <coughs> they weren't there. This, this Gamora is kind of confusing me. I guess that's an understatement. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, we're used to the Rabbanim rearranging something because they say logically this must be it must mean this, or rearranging or saying, well, my halakhic experience tells me that this must be the fact. Um, but here they're doing a lot of things. They're saying logically it should be this, and therefore we're going to rearrange the Gomorrah. They're doing a lot of things here. Uh -huh. Am I missing yeah. this text? Yeah. No, that's a that's a that's a problem with this Gemara. We don't have a way of explaining Sumchus, and we're adding in s stories in into the, the Brisa yeah. to make Sumchus fit. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Saying we're missing some details. Yeah. The false witnesses will be will have to pay because he said, "Oh, look, these are the real witnesses." No, false witnesses have to pay because other witnesses actually said that you were with us. He, when he said, when he, yeah, you're asking why is that significant? I'm talking about the case where these false witnesses came and testified against him and said, oh, <coughs> "You guys were not there." Right. So and so was there. Right, so but then other witnesses showed up and actually proved. That he was correct that those two witnesses were not there. So then those false witnesses are the ones that are have to pay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and now uh I supply you plenty about see the the gun up and these other two witnesses that that uh, Shmerel actually said, Levi and Yehuda, you were there. Um they testified again. Here's the mach like this. The Rabban and Sabri have a the Shiat Khalazima. The Rabban say that we don't look at Levi Yehuda's testimony. Because since Shmerel said that that they were actually there, you can't make them into Zaymimin. And we have a rule. You have to be able to be able to, um, it's like the ink of a Sefer Torah has to be able to be erased. You know what I'm saying? That's something like that. You have, the witnesses, it has to be able that you can uh, get rid of them by saying that you were Zaymimin. And here you set it up in a way where they can never go, they can never uh, be taken away as Zaymimin. And Sumchus holds that Edis, that testimony that cannot be taken away as Zaymimin is uh, as conspiring uh, testimony to witnesses is, is considered good. The Gemara says, how could you say that? Everyone knows that that's not a good witness. That's not a good testimony. How could you say that Sumchus holds that? The Gemara explains. 
when does it really mean that witnesses that you can't um, take them away as conspiring witnesses is is invalid? That's if they didn't have a day or da- a date or a, or a time. Avalhacha, but that's not the case here. Avalhacha, see you at the Kamasayale. Simcha says that the fact that you're making the testimony stronger, that shouldn't mess it up. The fact that he's admitting to the witnesses is now going to say that the whole testimony is false. It has a date and time. It's not Eid Shiat Yachal Azimah. The Rabbanan are extending the concept of Eid Shiat Yachal Azimah to another case. So that's why Sumchus would say that this is a good testimony. And therefore, when Sumchus said that they have to pay, what was Sumchus, uh, then they have to pay the double. Because he admitted to, because uh, they testified, uh, his admitting is nothing, right? They testified to the, that he stole. And he has to pay the extra, the extra four or five times because his admitting is not considered anything because witnesses came later. Remember we said, according to Rav Hamnuna, his, his admitting is not considered anything. Amar Mar, in, in this discussion, the, of the Bryce, in, in this discussion, we mentioned one point, that the, that the um, conspiring witnesses have to pay double payment because that's what they wanted him to pay. They wanted him to pay double there. One second. Me the commodity the gun of but he admitted that he stole. Karen by Shlomi, he should pay the first payment. Because even if he admits, he only exempts him from the double payment. But the first payment should come from him. The witnesses should only pay the second payment. He doesn't have to pay the second one. But they wanted him to pay it. Doesn't he have to be in basement to say that? It was probably in basement. Amar Abelazim, the Rav. Rabbi Lazar says in the name of Rav, Rabbi Lazar, who was an Amir in Eretz Yisrael, I think was first in Babel, and he was by Rav, Rabbi Lazar ben Pedas. He says, Tani, Tashlam de Kefel. It doesn't mean that they have to pay the double payment. It means that they pay the double payment, not, not double payment, but the second. He pays the first, and they pay wow. the second payment. Follow? When right. it says Kefel, usually you think Kefel means two times. Here, Kefal means one time, but it's the second time. Yeah, and he pays the first. That's how we, we answer this up. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, go ahead. Maybe the uh, <coughs> second payment is not doubled or the first payment because the witnesses are taking responsibility for the first person. The first person loses a half the responsibility because the conspiring the witnesses, witnesses, they did wrong too. Right. Right, right. So the what the rule is that conspiring witnesses have to pay what they wanted to do. Right. Okay. So over here, what we're saying is, I know what they wanted to do, but the fact is that he's guilty as well. So what he has he has to pay the first payment because he admitted to stealing, and they should have to pay the double payment because they were trying to get him to have to pay double, and they were they weren't even there. Now, the, they, even though they said the truth, but they weren't there. They have to do what they wanted to. Okay. Gonna be hiktish. New Gemara on the top of Ayin Bab. This is a quote from the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, let, let me give it to you from the Mishnah. The Mishnah says that if someone steals and then he consecrates the item that he stole, and after he consecrated it, he goes ahead and he slaughters the animal or he sells it. So the rule is that he only has to pay double, but he doesn't have to pay four or five times. Rib Shimon comes in and Reb Shimon says, one second, this is a discussion over here, what Reb Shimon says, we'll see. So the Gemara has an interesting question. I get why he doesn't have to pay for the slaughtering four or five times. The reason is, because when did he steal? He stole something that belonged to Hektish. So he doesn't have to pay for that. He only has to pay, I think, when it says, it says, Reyeu or something. So he only has to pay if it's coming from his friend, but here it's not coming from his friend. Actually, it comes out that it's less. Yeah, it's, only... yeah, it's interesting. You said if your intention was to, to, 
sacrifice it. Yeah, there's 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 problems. Well, we're we're not saying that his that his intention is to sacrifice. What happened is he stole it and he consecrated it, and then he slaughtered it, probably for the meat, or for whatever he slaughtered it for. We're going to ask soon what was the slaughtering. Well, that's going to be that's going to come up. But meanwhile, the Gemara is saying, okay, I get it. What he slaughtered was not his friends; it was belonged to the to the temple. And it did not belong to the owner because he consecrated it. However, Ella Ahektish Lachayev. I'm sorry. saying it was the owner's. If he stole it, it's not. Really yeah, he his. stole it. The owner must have given up hope. And he consecrates it. So now it changes his possession. So, okay. So, <clears throat> but the problem is what the Gemara is asking is that when he gives it to Hektish itself, when he consecrates it, what he's doing right now is he's selling. It's as if he's selling because he's making it Hektish. And one of the ways of having to pay four or five times is to sell it. Yeah. So I get he doesn't have to pay four or five times for slaughtering it, but the hektish itself should be like he sold it. What's the difference who he sold it to? If he sold it to his, to another person or if he sold it to heaven. Either way, he should have to pay the four. It's like changing ownership. Now, um, one point that I'm missing in this is that I wish the Gemara would tell me that if you gift it, you also have to pay four or five times. Because over here, he's gifting it. I, I don't have like... Which it, maybe in there there's like a Rambam or something. They say if he sells it or if he gifts it. And so the same thing over but here we're saying, we're considering it like he sold it to Hektish. Why is he selling it to Hektish? Maybe he's gifting it and I don't know the rule by gifting it. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not seeing exactly what I'm asking here. Um, let's leave it as a, I'm allowed to have a question. <laughs> okay. Hamani uh, Rav Shimini. The Gemara answers that what we're dealing with here is Rav Shimon, the opinion of Rav Shimon. Rav Shimon is Rav Shimon by Yochai. And his opinion is, Let me give you the scenario. Um, sometimes a person consecrates an animal and if the animal gets lost, he's exempt from having to replace it. Because he said, Harezu Ayla. This animal is an Ayla. This animal gets lost. All right, I'm sorry. That animal is the Ayla, not any other animals in my property are, are Aylas. I said, this one is an Ayla. But if he says, Hare Alai Ayla, I'm accepting on myself an Ayla. And then he says, and this is, it will be this animal. So then he's, if this animal gets lost, then he's responsible to replace it because the obligation was on himself. So now, if you're obligated to replace an animal, you have that obligation. So now what turns out is that if someone damages that animal, so or if it's lent to someone or whatever it is, because that that animal causes a loss of money, is considered mamain. Anything that causes a loss of money is considered money. So Rabbi Shimon holds that this is considered under his authority and it's considered that he owns it. So <laughs> what we're saying is like this, and we're following the view of Rabbi Shimon, any type of consecrated item, which is, means a sacrifice that you have to replace. It's still in the, in the domain, in the jurisdiction of the owner. And therefore the fact that he gave it to Hector <laughs> does not mean that it left his possession. It's not that it, we said, what's the difference if you sell it to someone else or if you give it to Hector, it's the same thing. It says, no, when he's giving it to Hector, she still has responsibility over it, it's still considered his. It's not considered that, it, that, uh, that he gifted it or sold it to someone. Okay. Umar says, that, yeah, that's a good answer, but it's not going to fit with our Mishnah. Because when I meet the Sefer Reb Shimon, if you read further in our Mishnah, it says, however Reb Shimon says, that means, Avi Reishalav Reb Shimon. The fact that afterwards you said, however Reb Shimon says, that means that Reb Shimon wasn't the one that was talking beforehand. And you're trying to tell me that it's Reb Shimon beforehand. So we come up with another answer. We say that we're dealing with this two levels of consecration. One is a very holy and one is a lesser holiness. It's called Kachim Kalim. For example, a peace offering is considered Kachim Kalim. A peace offering, the owner still is responsible for different things. Anyway, this is called the lesser level of, of holiness. The owner actually eats some of the animal when after it's sacrificed. Kachim, kachim, kachim only goes to the Kayanim. So, number four. 
Giving the stolen animal as a present the same as selling a steep rice below 79. Okay, the so Gemara is going to tell us later that gifting it is the same. Very good. Very good. So that, and that's going to come up in uh, in three days. But that's the Gemara later. Okay, good. Beautiful. Okay. So, uh, and we're following the view of Rabbi Yisai Aglili. Rabbi Yisai Aglili. Rabbi Yisai Aglili is a friend of Rabbi Akiva. A uh, friend, a Talmud Chaver of Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Yisai Aglili. I'm not familiar with that, but could be. I don't know. I don't know. Um, don't mind that he holds Kachikale and Mum and Bailam who Bishusay Kaimi. It still belongs to the owner and it's under his domain. It has to do with Mi'ila. If you, if, you know, if, if, uh, if someone uses it for personal use, is it considered, uh, is there Mi'ila over there? He says, no, it still belongs to the owner. That's it. Okay. Now, Abel Kachi Kachimai, what would be the rule if it wouldn't be Kachim Kalam? Let's say it's an Oila. It's a burnt offering. So, is going to have to pay four or five times just by consecrating it. Yeah? The way that we just answered, if you say it's only talking about a specific type of sacrifice, that would tell me that if it's the other sacrifice, you would have to pay four or five times just by consecrating it. <coughs> Instead of saying in the ratio, Gana v'tavach v'achachich tish m'shal t'shlami dalad v'hei, that if, that if you slaughter it, if you steal it and slaughter it, and then you consecrated it, you have to pay four or five times. Why did we need to do that? We could have said in the Seifa the exact same thing. We could have gone like this. We could have said, we could have divided up the Seifa into two cases. We could have said, but this is, usually it doesn't do it like this. Usually it does it a little slightly different. Usually it's, instead of saying in the Seifa, we should have divided the ratio. Here it says, instead of saying in the ratio, we should have divided the sefer. Okay, Mishkafela. When do we say this? Kalim. This would be um, when do we say that if he if he steals an animal, consecrates it, and then slaughters it, he doesn't have to pay four or five times. That's by kachim kalim. <laughs> that's if it's of lesser holiness. Avil bekachim kachim. But if it's of of uh, more serious holiness. Then he would have to pay four or five times, not because of the slaughtering, but just the consecration itself would make him pay. Why did we? Why didn't we do that? Let me just see the, what the Gemara answers. The Gemara says, "Really, there's no difference between those two types." So the Kashalach, but you asked the question. Shouldn't the consecration itself be like gifting it? And if you gift it, you have to pay the four or five times if it's that type of animal. The, the Gemara's answers, when it's sold to a regular person, so it's actually um, the name on the animal actually changes. So it's, 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 as if, it's as if every item that a person owns has a passport. Passport says like what, what uh, nation it belongs, to, it belongs to. Every item has a passport that on it, it says which owner it belongs to. So if when you sell an item, it's as if there's like a tag on it that says, this is sh- this is Ruvain's ox. When you sell it, you have to change. You have to get a new uh, license. You have to get a new... And now there's a new tag on it that says, this is the ox of uh, of Shimon. When you sell it to to heaven, which means you consecrate it, you don't change the tag. Why? Originally, it's Ruvain ox. And now it's Ruvain sacrifice. But you don't change the name on it. You change something about it, but not just the name of whose, whose it is. And therefore, it's not considered like gifting it, which is what we were asking. It's like gifting it, and you should have to pay the four or five times. All right, is it clear? Um, well, that's interesting, too. But so, just to clarify, so if you get the higher level of, of holiness, is it you have to pay four or five times? That's what we were thinking, but now we're saying no. Oh, okay, yeah. forget it. Yeah. Reb Shimon says, okay. Let's go uh, take a look at the Mishnah. Reb Shimon said, what did Reb Shimon say? He said that that um, consecrated items that a person is obligated, is responsible for them, he has to pay four or five times. Reb Shimon, it doesn't tell us what Reb Shimon is talking about, um, what the, exactly the case is. But if you're not responsible for them, then you're going to be exempt. Okay, let's take a look. By the way, there was one uh, thing that I was skipping over in this Gemara, is that even though we were saying that 
<coughs> that it was changing hands, possibly when you were consecrating it. Um, or, or we were saying that it wasn't changing hands because it was still, it was still, if let's say we're saying that it's Kachi Kalam, let's say that, that answer. We're saying it's Kachim Kalam, so it doesn't change hands. It's lesser holiness. But nevertheless, we were still saying that when you go ahead and slaughter it, you were still going to be exempt. See, what's interesting is it's like we're, we're, we're taking two sides to this, which is it's, it's not so fair. Because if you're saying that it's still remaining yours, so then why, when you slaughter it, don't you say that it's Reyehu and you should have to pay? So we're taking two sides to this. We're saying when it comes to slaughtering, we're saying that it really... It's not considered the original owners, and you're slaughtering it. It belongs to Hectish. And when it comes to making it Hectish, we're saying that it's still yours. And uh, so anyway, that's the. Rab Shimon Aymer Chula Amri Gemara asks like this: Nehi de Savar Rab Shimon Mali Machula Hadith Mali Machula Shemayim. The Gemara understands Rab Shimon over here to be saying that when you consecrate it, you're making it. Uh, you're changing on exactly like the Gemara before. When you're consecrating it, you're you're changing uh, hands, and therefore you should be chayev four or five times just for consecrating it. Now the Gemara is saying, okay, I, I get the Shimon holds that. We're going to see soon that that's not exactly the case. But the Gemara is saying here, in, although Reb Shimon holds that if you, what's the difference if you sell it to another person or if you sell it to heaven? However, <laughs> if that's the case, Reb Shimon should have said exactly the opposite. If you're still responsible for it. Then you should be exempt. If you're still responsible for it, that means that you're still owning it. It did not change hands. You should be only have to pay for the one that you're not responsible for because it did change hands. Yeah. Or no, so he has to pay for it. Yeah. It's a benefit. That's a good point. That's a good point. Let's take a look at the file. Uh, Hill is asking that we should be using the, the laws of watchmen here instead of using changing hand just because he's responsible. So, okay, so he's a watchman, he's responsible. It doesn't have to mean it doesn't mean necessarily that he's changing hands. But let's see let's see further in the Gemara and then we'll have to analyze it after. If he's responsible, so then he should be exempt from the four or five times because it has not, nafak means to go out, it has not left his okay. his domain. But um, uh, consecration that he's not responsible for, if he should have to pay the four or five times, because <coughs> it's left his domain. They say like this, you got the whole thing wrong. Rav Shimon wasn't referring to what you think he's referring to. You have to read it like this. You have to add in a, a, a little bit. Rav Shimon is referring to another case. It says, If someone steals, he has all the laws of stealing, has to pay double, etc. But if someone steals from the thief, then he doesn't have to pay the four or five times. Why not? Because he doesn't have to pay the double. If you don't have to pay the double, then you lose the four or five times. The gain of Menaganov is putter from the double payment. Okay. And also, if someone steals hektish, someone has an animal in his property uh, that's hektish, and someone goes ahead and steals it, so he's going to be exempt also from the extra payments of the four or five times. Now, uh, my time, what's the reason? It says, stolen from the house of a man, not from the house of hektish. And that item wasn't hektish. Now, Rabbi Shimon Aymer, Shimon says one second. If the original owner was responsible for that sacrifice, then Chayev, then the thief has to pay. My time, what's the reason? Green and Beva Gunam should still consider that he stole from his domain because that original owner is going to have to replace it. So it's considered his. But if he's not responsible for it to replace it, then he's going to be Pater. The thief is going to be Pater from the extra payment. Like Green and Beva Gunam because it's not considered stolen from his. In the house of a man, 
stolen from Hector. Shmichti. Now, one second. So, I mean, of Shimon. The Gemara says that we have a statement. We know Reb Shimon holds, we learned this on, I think, Dafayan. The whole discussion, uh, Dafayan Aleph. Um, we learned an interesting case. We learned that Reb Shimon holds someone's Shechs on Shabbos, remember this, <coughs> someone's Shechs for Rabbi Dezara, someone's Shechs for Shor Niskal. Reb Shimon held that any Shechita that's not gonna, going to turn out to be edible is not considered a shechita at all. It's like you sh- a person shot right. shot the animal because it's not going to be edible. The only time a person has to pay four or five times is if he actually slaughters it. Now, according to Reb Shimon, mm. the slaughtering has to end up being edible. If this is a sacrifice, and the sacrifice has to be uh, a, a, a certain type of sacrifice, the, the, the thief is going to have to pay the four or five times. Why? Because the owner was still responsible for it. But where's it being slaughtered? It's being slaughtered outside the temple. It's being slaughtered outside the temple, no one can eat it. Shechita shena ruya, shruya, leish me shechita. It says, Dama shechita shena ruya, leish me shechita. Kachim nami shechita shena ruya hi. When he's slaughtering a sacrifice, even if it's the type that he should, that the original owner is responsible to replace, but it's still uh, outside the temple. Okay. And why did it matter that it was outside the temple? Because he admitted hectish? He even made it hectish. Okay. Comes along. Why is he slaughtering it at all? Well, no, we're talking about the thief took it, and yeah. Reb Shimon holds that if it gets slaughtered, the thief has to pay right. four or five times to the to the owner, right. even though it's hectic, because the owner was responsible to replace it. Saying one second, he slaughtered slaughter outside the temple. It's not considered slaughtering. Right. Is it also not considered slaughtering if he uses a bad knife? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we said. Uh, Nimta Trefa, those other things, I think we yeah, said the okay. same. The same okay. Ripshim and argued on that as well, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, Rabdimi comes and he says, in the name of Rabbi Yechon, Rabdimi was our traveler. He says, in the name of Rabbi Yechon from Yisrael, Bailam. Comes up with an interesting uh, teretz. Says he didn't slaughter it outside the temple, he brought it into the temple and, in and he slaughtered it for the owner. In the temple, he's a good guy. The Gemara says, one second, you told me that he's going to have to pay for a chazra karen labaylam. He slaughtered in the temple for the sake of the owner. That's as if he brought it for the owner and it was considered slaughtered properly. The kayanim that slaughtered it had the original owner in mind and they brought his sacrifice, which he was supposed to bring. So at least they gave him back his original, the principal. He shouldn't have all those other payments. He wasn't the one that slaughtered, right? It was the kohanim. Doesn't matter. I don't know. Yeah, even if he slaughtered it. Okay, Amr Rabbi Yitzchak Baravin Shinish Bachadam. Rabbi Yitzchak Baravin says no. This, uh, he didn't return the Karen. Thief slaughter. <laughs> yeah, the thief slaughter. But we said before it didn't have to be the thief because he's allowed to use a, a shliach. Remember we had that. Come on. We said that it wasn't returned to the original owner because the blood has spilled. So if the blood spilled. That means that it wasn't. It wasn't uh, a good sacrifice. At the time of the shechita, you have to add in. The time of the shechita was good. Just was the blood spilled, so it then it wasn't considered like he repaid the. Uh, okay, the shechita was still good. We're resolving the issue with Reb Shimon. The shechita was good. It's just that it wasn't considered that he repaid it. That he gave it back. He also Ravan Am Rabbi Yechanan. Ravan was a traveler also, and when he made statements in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, usually they were more accepted. We're talking about that he slaughtered inside, but he didn't have the original owner in mind. That's an easy territ. He didn't have the original owner in mind, so it's not considered like he returned. Rishlokish <coughs> says that he shechted a the, the animal had a mum in it, the animal that he stole, and he shechted it outside the temple. Okay, now that when, which means that the shechita was a kosher shechita because it had a mum. The Gemara says it had a blemish. Tell about Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar has a question on what Rish Lakish is saying. And, and Rabbi Yechanan. It says, the Rabbi, the Rabbi Yechanan, Tahi means that he deliberated on this. He says, the Rabbi Yechanan, Shechita Materes. Is it really the Shechita that allows the animal to be considered acceptable? Aleizrika Materes. 
It's the zrika that allows it. It's the sprinkling of the blood. So why are you telling me the shechita is good? The shechita is only good if the sprinkling of the blood is good, but the blood spilled. According to that answer of um, Rabbi Yitzchak or whatever, whoever said that. It's part of it. Um, according to Rishlakish, we said uh, we said mm-hmm. that the uh, the the shechita is going to redeem it. It's not. You first you had to. I'm sorry. The shechita is going to allow it to be eaten. First you had to redeem it if it had a mum. Gemara says, according to Rabbi Lazar, you forgot a major point. Rabbi Shimon holds uh, anything that Rabbi Shimon has is this view that anything that has potential. The potential is considered like it's already uh, laid out, sort of like uh, theoretical physics, that um, that uh, all these potentials have, are, are uh, already, uh, since when at the time of the slaughtering, there was potential for it to be sprinkled. So the slaughtering is considered acceptable, even if it wasn't done. Where does he get this from? He has, um, uh, well, yeah, maybe, I don't know. That's too, too deep for me. And Kalaimid uh, Lizra, okay. Where does he get this from? Um, I could do the first, uh, the first uh, Bryce over here. He says, "Call him a Anything that that that's standing to be sprinkled is as if it's sprinkled already. Uh, the Tanya was taught in the Bryce. Reb Shimon, Shimon says, "Yesh nicer, yesh nicer to masaychlan, yesh nicer shein matami to masaychlan." Now the rule is that in order for food to be contaminated, it has to be edible. Okay, now. Nicer is in Yiddish, Dr. Stein likes this, it's called Iber Gablibana. It's Ooh. leftover food from a sacrifice. So, so um, it's possible that leftover food from a sacrifice was at one time edible. It's possible that leftover food from a sacrifice was not one time edible, it was never edible, never halachically edible. So now, if it was halachically edible, then it will become contaminated with Tomas Eichlin. If it was never halachically edible, then it's not even considered food. So Ketzat. What would the case be? Lon, if it stayed overnight with Nezirika, but it wasn't the blood wasn't sprinkled, so there was never edible. So it's not considered uh, uh, edible food. Zrika, but if it stayed overnight after the blood was sprinkled, then metamitamasaichlan, then it would be considered edible food and it would c- c- contract impurity. But Kaimalan, my left Nezirika, and we've established what does it mean before this was sprinkled? Kaidim Shinira Lizrika, before it was eligible to be sprinkled. What does it mean? It was it stayed overnight after it was sprinkled. After it was eligible to be sprinkled, not actually. What does it mean, eligible to be sprinkled? It was, it, there was no time in the day to sprinkle it. What happened? He slaughtered it exactly right before sunset. So in such a case, so it's not it's not considered eligible. So therefore, it was never it was never edible. It was never edible. So therefore, it doesn't contract impurity. Lachishnilizrika. What was that case? It was lachishnilizrika uh, lon. Uh, it's it stayed overnight after it was eligible to be sprinkled. because there was still time by day to sprinkle it. That's metami timasaychlin. Then it would become impure because alma. We see from this kalaimid lizrik kizarik dami. It didn't need to be sprinkled. It just needed to be eligible to be sprinkled. You needed to have time. And the potential itself makes it considered el- eligible. Okay. So that's what we we're saying over here, that the same thing would apply. That since the shechita was done and it was eligible for the blood to be sprinkled, that's considered an, a kosher shechita, even though later on the sacrifice wasn't kosher. But the shechita was kosher. Right. Okay. I'll leave it over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>